what we do know is the Senna looks appropriately wild for a car that will succeed the mega-powerful McLaren P1, the company's previous hypercar. The Senna's specs aren't quite as brawny as the P1's, 789 horsepower from a 4.0-liter V8, but the live 2,461-pound dry weight makes it sound like this car is going to absolutely fly. Metaphorically, that is. Thanks to all the wild aerodynamics going on throughout the design of the Senna's body, this car will be practically glued to the ground. That will make it a fantastic tool for the fantastically wealthy people who want to use on a proper racetrack. For those who buy it just to store or display it, though, those aerodynamics are at least good enough to make the Senna look unlike any other car they might have in their collection, especially from the sides. The Senna's hood is the part that's most recognizably McLaren, but the rest of its body curls and cuts in on itself in new ways creating fast lanes for air to scream through the car instead of slowing it down. Good luck finding a straight line on this car that's not one of the ones in the McLaren logo. Even though there's purpose behind the Senna's style, it still looks like a toy come to life. Looking at the scoops and swirls of body work instantly conjures up the metallic smell and cold touch of the many matchbox cars I had as a kid. It feels like I could just as quickly snatch it up with two fingers and slide it along the ground as I could hop in the driver's seat and hit the gas dot and yes, gas. Unlike the P1, this new McLaren apparently isn't a hybrid, which means McLaren will try to wrangle the crown of fastest production car from its own predecessor with an internal combustion engine.